The following episode of Almost Live contains material which may not be suitable for small children. For example, there's a part about halfway through where during the fight scene, a guy's arm comes off. And then a little bit later, a bunch of teenagers get really drunk on malt liquor. And finally, we'll be showing the best parts of the Madonna video in slow motion. So mom and dad, put the kids to bed and hurry back. It's going to be a hot night tonight. <laughs> Everyone, this is Roy Otis the Growler. Wow! I'm very proud to be the announcer on the the almost live TV show because I'm getting my announcing badge and bobcats. And now I will push this button and start the show, everyone. Oh, um, my fault. Here, corks. John! John! Welcome. Welcome to Almost Live on King 5. That's King 5, the station that once again has Jeff Renner. Jeff's back. You know, oh, there's Jeff. Very nice there, yeah. You know, now that he's, he's got his old job back, Jeff's agreed to stop the flooding, which is nice. You know, that was close. I think next week we're going to get a plague of locusts. But rest easy, Jeff is back. I saw him in the hall yesterday. I said, hi, Jeff. And he said, hello, John. Can't quite do it, don't have long enough vocal cords, but I said, hello, John. Jeff, a very manly man. Apparently, he's used his year off to make his voice even deeper and more authoritative, so that's nice, you know. Anyway, Jeff's back, but the X-Man is gone. Oh, yeah, as you know, the other day, the Sonics traded their best player away this week. He leaves with some great statistics in scoring, rebounding, and I believe he scored one technical knockout last week, so he gets... <laughs> Gets that. I hate, you know, I hate to see another bald role model leave town, which has got me, got me kind of down. Plus, it's getting cold, it's dark at noon, and I, th I think I'm coming down with that holiday season depression. You know, and it had me so worried that I checked in a medical book for the warning signs of holiday depression, and I thought I'd share them with you. Now, these are the, the warning signs of what we'd call Christmas blues. For example, you wonder if a broken candy cane is sharp enough to kill. <laughs> It's a dead giveaway there. Children's laughter sounds like burning $20 bills. You find yourself yelling yes during the first half of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. There's a good sign there. A lot of people here are coming down with it. You tell the Salvation Army attendant, here, ring this. You argue with Santa's helper over the cost of the photo. You think that Miracle on 34th Street means a house listed for under $140,000. And finally, you decorate your house with twinkly, light, twinkly lights spelling out Santa sucks. Now that's, that's, that's got to be a star. Those are a few things just to watch out for. And be careful when you're shopping because you can do some crazy things at Christmas time. If you have trouble with your finances around this time of year, We've got a product that's just made for you. Have credit cards gotten you in trouble in the past? Try Smart Card. Smart Card warns you when you're approaching your limit by giving you varying degrees of electric shock. Uh, yeah, I'd like to put the camcorder on the card. Ooh. <sighs> and uh, I'd also like one of those uh, big screen TVs. Sir? Sir? <sighs> Sir, are you okay, sir? And Smart Card will also tell you when you've had enough. Uh, bartender, I'd like another round. You've had enough. No huh? more for you. Uh, no more for you. Nothing, no nothing. More for you. Never mind. No Just more give me you. another one. No more for you. No more for you. No more for you. No more for you. No more. No more. I think you better listen to your card, buddy. You've had enough. No more for you. No more for you. No more for you. No more for you. All right. No okay. Fine. No In that case, no I'd like to buy another round for this no lovely lady here. I said no. Ooh. Uh, yeah, hi. I I'm watching your ad, uh, Barry Manilow's Greatest Hits. I I'd like to order that record. And when you've completely lost your mind, Smart Card will simply hide until you come to your senses. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Card number, I've got... Well, wait a minute. I I it was right here. Uh, hold on, hold on. It was right here. Where did... Where did you go? I'm going to order this record. No way, Jose. Where are you? <laughs> got you, sucker. <laughs> huh? 
short card will hog tie you and save you from yourself. Thanks, smart card. Smart card, the card that knows better than to give you any credit. Okay, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. And now, fashion model or small nation in the Middle East. Oman. Yasmin. Ayman. Yemen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that spontaneous reaction. Well, you know, we're just a few weeks away from celebrating the very first Christmas of the 90s, and we've been getting a few hints that perhaps the celebration might be a little different than the decades of the past. The feeling, I think, is a little different. I've been getting some hints in the Christmas cards I've been receiving the last few weeks. I'd like to share a few with you. For example, I got this one. Wishing holiday cheer to you and your dysfunctional family. A new, you know, <laughs> kind of an 80s, kind of a 90s now thing. Season's greetings. Now you have to send me one. You know, going into a recession. Best wishes for a dependency-free new year. A nice thought there. And let's see. Happy holidays from our house to your house. Get that car off the lawn. Some, <laughs> some warm thoughts. Things may be a little different that way this year, but one thing that I think that hasn't really changed is the way that the different sexes shop for each other. And we thought we could best explain this by taking a look at this concept. Let's take a look now at how a typical boyfriend and girlfriend shop for each other. Well, my boyfriend is allergic to wool. So last June, I decided I would start hand knitting this cotton sweater. And I, I really hope that he likes it, because I worked really hard on it. But that's not all I got. I know he really loves heavy metal music. So I got him the whole collection of ACDC, even though I hate it. But I got it for him anyway. And last summer, he was on a scuba diving trip, and he lost his watch. So I got him a new triathlon watch, and I, I, I hope he really likes it. I, I love this one. And, oh, oh, and I also got, he's on the rowing team at his company, so I got him a really great rowing machine at home so that he can train when it's the off-season. Oh, and the best, the best. He went to UW, and, well, I sold my soul, and I managed to get a couple of the Rose Bowl tickets so that he and his dad could go down to Los Angeles, and I, and I got a couple of round-trip plane tickets, too, so they could go, and, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I got him something sort of practical and boring. I got him a little bit of Microsoft stock. <laughs> I got my sweetheart this far side mug. Well, that hasn't changed. It's okay, Bill, we're back to me now. Well, that hasn't changed. <laughs> That hasn't changed at all, but you know, there's some new songs. Some, uh, we noticed there's some new carols for the 90s, Christmas carols. You can expect to be hearing this downtown or maybe in your neighborhood. Some of these songs. Uh, look through here, for example, some of the titles. Uh, Frosty the Crackhead this year. Uh, <laughs> Chestnuts Nuking in a Microwave. Rudolph the Empowered Reindeer. I'm Dreaming of a Multi-Ethnic Christmas. It's Too Silent of a Night, Better Call 911. And... <laughs> I saw mommy kissing a guy in a Porsche. All right, well, you can look for those. But, you know, probably the most difficult and depressing part of the Christmas holidays is the buying of the presents. And this year, however, we've managed to find some unique local gifts that are sure to brighten up the holiday season. First, now, you know how hard it can be to get that early morning ice off your car windshield? This year, why not let the hardest substance known to man make the job a little easier with the Dan Lewis hair ice scraper. Yeah. Takes anything. Can go through diamonds. So that's a good one. Now here's a fun and educational gift for the entire family, okay? This is the Skagit Valley Aquarium. Okay. No need. 
No need to bother with messy frogs or fish. This is everything you need to build your own disaster area. Nice educational thing. Whoa, it gets heavy. Nice educational thing for the whole family. Now, here's a gift for the safety conscious deadhead in your family. It's the Grateful Dead smoke alarm. See, it knows the difference between a real fire and a little harmless smoke. Okay. Now, as you may have read, a local man is selling chunks of the I-90 bridge for Christmas gifts. Well, we've got a better idea for that man in your life. It's a genuine chunk of the piano that Michelle Pfeiffer writhed on in the fabulous Baker Boys. Genuine <laughs> piano bass. Filmed in Seattle, we got those right here. Anyway, that's sure to bring a smile to that special someone. All right, you guys, another one for the guys. Does this happen to you? You want to wear one of those convenient fanny packs? but you're afraid of what your macho friends might say? Well, here's the answer. The I'm all man fanny pack. You can wear it with confidence. And here's a stocking stuffer also for you guys. It's Larry Bird's fourth quarter cologne. You'll feel like you're right there in the game and smell like it too. Now here's a book that any Northwesterner would be proud to own. It's the Emmett Watson collection in two volumes. Volume one is entitled The Wit of Emmett Watson. <laughs> and it's complemented by volume two, The Incoherent Ramblings <laughs> of Emmett Watson. So brighten any coffee table. Finally, well, the X-Man may be gone, but he'll never be forgotten if you give the X-Man Dale Ellis Rock'em Sock'em Robots. You, you and your loved ones will spend many happy hours reliving X's greatest contribution to the Emerald City. Come on, John. Here. There you are. Studio amplification for Almost Live, provided by American Music. And now, Baseball Hall of Famer, or Expensive Dinner, Rabbit Moranville. Vitello Medallion. Napoleon Ladjoy. Chateau Briand. We started a half hour ago. Where the hell have you been? Okay, if you're going to be that way about it, forget it. It's time once again for the worst girlfriend in the world. She's the worst girlfriend you've ever had. Every time you think about her, you get mad. The worst girlfriend in the world. A psycho bitch from hell, yes, that's the girl. The worst girlfriend, you know it's true. She thinks it's funny, but the joke's on you. She's the worst girlfriend in the world. Tonight on The Worst Girlfriend in the World, three more guys get messed up and have to go into therapy. So she walked away from the movie, got in my car, and wrecked it again. How long had you been seeing her? About three months. Well, why did you see her for that long? The sex was really good. And, uh... <laughs> So, what do you think, babe? Pretty nice, huh? You have a stupid stereo. And I hate this music! And you have an ugly TV! Honey? No, I Darling? No, 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 honey, put that down! I've always hated this! 
And then she broke all my records and she kicked in the TV and then she set the couch on fire. Again. How many couches had she set on fire prior to this? Five. Why didn't you leave her after she set the first couch on fire? Well, the sex was really good. And, uh... Surprise. <laughs> honey, what are you doing here? Well, you left, and I told you I was going to style your hair today. Uh, no, honey. No, no I no, wanted no, to. Come on, no, cut, no, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> And then she uh, pulled off my toupee and humiliated me in front of everybody. How was the sex? Good. Yeah. She's the worst girlfriend you've ever had. Every time you think about her, you get mad. The worst girlfriend in the world. A psycho bitch from hell, yes, that's the girl. The worst girlfriend, you know it's true. She thinks it's funny, but the joke's on you. She's the worst girlfriend in the world. Next week, the worst girlfriend meets Godzilla. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the John Report. I'm John, here's my report. Boeing is considering building a new plant in Monroe. Company officials say Monroe would be an ideal area because it already has a large supply of people wearing Peterbilt caps. <laughs> to help combat gang activity, Seattle schools are cracking down on students who wear Los Angeles Raiders clothing. Students who wear Sonics gear will be given psychiatric examinations. <laughs> In other efforts to control gangs, the schools are going to have classes in anger management. This should fit in well with the training that the gangs already provide in the community, anger development and anger sales. <laughs> Fees have been proposed for Washingtonians crossing the Canadian border at Blaine. In return for the payment, Canada will put any photograph you want on the back of their $1 bill. <laughs> Seattle is on the cover of this month's Garbage magazine. Not to be outdone, Everett will be featured in next month's issue of Big Lintball magazine. <laughs> the Washington Supreme Court has ruled in favor of Seattle's law against aggressive panhandling. Channel 9 plans to appeal the decision. <laughs> Bishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa is visiting the United States, and one of his stops will be Helena, Montana. Local excitement quickly turned to disappointment, however, when citizens were told, no, this isn't Tutu the famous rodeo clown. <laughs> Military recruiting is way down in the Northwest right now. It dropped off as soon as Operation Desert Shield started. Apparently, kids are not sure they need a guaranteed job that badly. <laughs> Finally, Denny's is giving free food to the I-90 bridge workers. The workers report that the biscuits and gravy make good concrete reinforcement. <laughs> this has been a job report. Thank you. And good night. John, what would you do if I press this button? And now, X-rated performer, or tasty cookie, Ginger Lynn, Lorna Dune, Ginger Snap, Melissa Mounds. Have you ever been to a nice party and found out that everyone there is really smart? Hi, Joel Ryman, Babbitt and Ryman. This is my partner, Hunter. Constance Burke, Stanford Astrophysics. Steve Muslix, Mensa. Aaron Shapiro, Harvard Law. Do you feel nervous? In a little over your head? Well, worry no more. Because now there's the HGT, the Home Geniency Test. Just suck the test strip, 
Stir the strip, check the card, and in three minutes, you'll know. In three minutes, I'll know. Carl, Boeing Auburn plant. I'm Doug, Boeing Everett plant. Hi. Now I know, thanks to HGT. Well, that's just about all the time we have this week. I uh, want to say congratulations, first of all, to Roy Otis, who was the announcer uh, this week. That gets him, I guess, his... Yes, yes, uh, a big hand for Roy over there. Thank you, yeah. I think now that you qualify for your Bobcat badge or whatever that is in your, your scout thing, congratulations, Roy. And please join us next week when we're going to have a Christmas visit with Bill Nye the Science Guy. Oh, yeah. Also... If you'd like to join us in our studio audience, please call us during business hours at this number here, 448-556. Our audience tonight had a good time, I think. And on top of that, some of them are going to get passes to see Paula Poundstone at the Seattle Improvisation tomorrow night. So call us, join us, watch us. We'll see you next week with Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bye-bye. Provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the show. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza. Mike and Mike's in the candy machine. Oh, hi, Roy. Yeah, listen, you did a really great job announcing, but uh, you, you, you can't you can't stick around here, okay? Here, here's a dollar, and uh, John, I, thanks thanks a lot, okay? I want you to be my father. Security, secu- yeah, yeah, take him away. But be gentle with him, okay? He's my son. Arch.